Hello and welcome to the Fun Foundations live streamed workshop day. We are so, so excited that you have chosen to spend the day with us. Um, now, some of you will have had online lessons or been to Zoom rehearsals over the last year. Some of you might have even had a chance to play at school and some of you won't have had much chance to play at all, but it doesn't matter to us. You are all welcome here. This workshop is probably gonna be a little bit different than some of the Zoom sessions you've been to and that's mainly because we can't see you. <laughs> but there's no pressure. We just want you to have a blow, join along playing with us and get excited about playing together as a group in person, hopefully very soon. Being here, being spaced apart and running a session like this is pretty new for us too. <laughs> um, but we love trying out new things and just giving it a go, right? <laughs> and we hope that you guys feel the same way as well. We just want you to try out something new today. Um, but we're just mainly excited because we're actually able to be together. <laughs> and we've, up to this point, we've only met online. So up to yesterday, We'd never been in person before, and that's why we are so excited. And I hope that comes across today, how excited we are that we can be here and doing this for you. So just some practical stuff. You've been sent out some music that we're going to be playing on later on in the morning. So make sure that you've got that ready. That's going to be a little bit later on, though. But most of this morning, you're not going to need any music at all. You can just follow along with us. If you've got any problems throughout the sessions, just send us an email and we'll be able to help you out. If you need it, you can find that email in the description of the video you're watching, or it will have come through, um, just reply to the email that sent you the link um, yesterday. So this morning workshop lasts until about 12 o'clock, but we are gonna be having a break from screens and playing at the middle of the morning. And we've also got some special guests joining us, but we're gonna tell you a little bit more about that later on. If the, after the session finishes, you just need more music, then you can stay on the video to watch some brilliant performances by the musicians at the British Army. Now it's not all brass, but it's still fantastic. And you can see that here at 12.30. Enough from me, I'm gonna hand over to these fabulous guys who are gonna be leading today's session. Paul, over to you. Thank you, Sarah. Well, hello everybody, we, and welcome to our Fun Foundations Day. We are the Brass Foundations team from Brass Band England. Say hello. Yeah. Woohoo, here they are. My name is Paul. Hi, I'm Dee. My name's Paul too. I'm Helen. I'm Sheila. And we're, I promise you, we are gonna have an absolutely fantastic day. This first few moments, we're going to think about a few different things. We're going to think about pulse, we're going to think about rhythm, and we're going to think about pitch. But first of all, I just want us to all chill out and relax and be ready for a really, really lovely morning, okay? So, let's just chill out and let's relax. So first things first, guys, let's just get our shoulders. So that's, so here we go, forward and back. One, two, three, and, now let's go forward. One, two. Three and four. Let's wave those arms. One, two, three, and four up to the sky. One, two, three. Down to your toes. And one, two, three, and four. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Now you'll probably tell by the colour of my hair here that some of us are a little bit older than you guys at home. But and because of that. There's something that we've all got in our bodies that maybe might be just beating a little bit slower than the, the beat that you've got going on. All of us music, musicians who are alive and well, we've got our heart pulsing in our bodies, which pushes the blood around our bodies and helps us do what we do, okay? Now, what's really important for us musicians is that when we have a pulse and when we're playing in our bands and our orchestras and our ensembles, that we all play at the same time. It would be no good if we all played at the pulse that our heart was giving us. So it's very, very important that we all play to the same Pulse. So we're going to do a funky little track and all I would like you to do in your homes this morning for the first one minute of this track is to follow me. Okay, so can my lovely tech team, will you hit the funky tunes please? Thank you.
not bad at all. I hope you were doing good at home, and I hope you followed. How did my team do? Did they do okay? Were you a good gang? Oh, okay, okay. So now it's your turn. So now I want you to watch the members of our team. Okay, so I'm going to go first. Now, how many beats did I count on each move? Did you get it, gang? How many were there? He paused, got it, there was eight moves. So we do each move eight times and we really, really feel that pulse. So we're gonna go again, but this time we're gonna follow the Brass Foundations uh, group around the room. So we're gonna go twice around the room. So start with me, we're gonna go this way, back to me one more time around. And you guys are gonna follow whatever they do. If you're at home and you're bored with our oldie moves, do your own, that's fine. But most importantly, Think about the pulse. Okay, here we go. One more time. Hit the tune. Good, so you, your heart's going to be beating at home. I know my heart's beating here. So yours is bound to be beating. Okay, thank you so much for joining in, guys. That's great. Now, you're here with us today because you play in a band or you play in a group, and that's fantastic, okay? What, there's so many skills that come from playing in an ensemble. We need to do many things at the same time. Obviously, one of the great things about being a musician is we never stop counting. And so the, the maths in the music is fantastic. And that's so important for us as musicians that we always keep counting. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to try and bring as many of our skills together in a game that I called Stomp. Now, as a musician, we need to be watching the conductor all of the time. We need to be listening to our friends on each side of us, okay? We need to be focused on the sound that we're making. And we need to think about, are we breathing properly? Yes, we are breathing properly. Always take the best breath. So there are so many things we have to do. And also that means that we're gonna have great teamwork. So coordination is so important to be a fantastic musician. So I'm gonna try and catch out my team of friends here. But first of all, I'm gonna try and catch you guys out at home. This game is called Stomp, everybody. Are you ready? Okay, so whatever I do, you're going to be my echo and you're going to copy me. Okay, so here we go. Whatever I, you ready? You watching? You listening? Here we go. Do you think they're listening at home? Do you think they're doing it? I, I'm not sure. Are people on their sofas, do you think? Back. Yeah, maybe. If you're sitting on your sofa or your armchair, that's no good to us. We need everybody in that living room to be stood up watching the TV or your laptop and being ready to go. Feet on the ground, listening with your best listening ears. Okay, here we go. Not bad, we're gonna carry on. Here we go. Very, very good. They're doing well. First time they've ever done it and you're doing very, very well. So I'm very, very pleased. Here's the thing though. Now I'm going to try and catch them out. So we're going to start easy, guys. And then it's going to get harder and harder and harder, okay? And if I think you've got it wrong, I'm going to knock you out. We might have a winner. Who knows? <laughs> Don't know. You guys at home have got to carry on, okay? So just watch and keep focused. So here we go. You ready? No one 
everyone wants to get it wrong, do they? They're doing so well. Well done, you get a round of applause for my Brass Foundation team. They can all breathe a sigh of relief. Now that's good. Okay, so we've done pulse, we've done rhythm, and now we want to do pitch, okay? So I'm going to sing something, guys, and I want you to sing it back to me. <clears throat> now I am from Wales, so this should sound good, but it probably won't. High, medium, low. High, low, low, medium, high. Low, medium, high. Low, medium, low. Low, medium, low. High, medium, low. High, medium, low. Okay, easy peasy, I know. I know you stood there thinking, this is so easy. That's fine, okay? Now let's keep listening, okay? Because it's the listening that's important, okay? So I'm going to make it a little bit more difficult. You ready, gang? Here we go. Low, medium, low, medium, high. Low, medium, low, medium, high. High, medium, high, medium, low. High, medium, high, medium, low. Low, medium, low, medium, high, medium, low. Low, medium, low, medium, high, medium, low. Low, medium, high, medium, high, medium, low. Low, medium, high, medium, high, medium, okay, low. Low, medium, low, high, low, medium, low. Low, medium, low, high, low, medium, low. High, medium, low, high, high, medium, low. High, medium, low, high, high, medium, low. Low, medium, low, medium, low, high, low. Low, medium, low, medium, low, high, low. High, medium, low, high, high, medium, low. High, medium, low, high, high, medium, low. Low, medium, low, high, low, medium, low. Low, medium, low, high, low, medium, low. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the Brass Foundation team. <laughs> I am very, very impressed, gang. That was fantastic. So there you go, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, we have done some pulse, we have done some rhythm, and we've done some pitch. And now I'm going to hand over to my fantastic Paul number... Well, Paul M, the, mo <laughs> the more important Paul, because he's the tuba player. Over to you, sir. Great. Thank you very much, Paul. Good stuff. Um, we've done our warming up now. We're warmed in our bodies, but we need to really think about what we're doing with our breathing and what we're doing with our uh, diaphragms, our muscles down here. So can you all go, ha, 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 ha. Great. So we're going to sing a song now called um, The Weller Man. The words are a little bit different. You can see the words. I hope you all know the tune, but really think about your breathing. You've got to breathe in at some points in this song and breathe out on a letter F. So can we breathe in and out on an F? And then another verse, we'll be breathing out on, a S, on an S sound. And we want to see how long we can make that S sound last. How long can we make it last? Breathe in, out. You're better than me. You're much better than me, but I'm speaking. You haven't spoken yet, so I've lost all my breath. Anyway, so I want you to really join in. Join in the chorus if you, if you uh, don't want to join in the rest of the verses. You guys can join in the chorus and as many verses as you fancy. Now, we've also got, towards the end, we've also got a percussion verse. So I want you to think about anything you've got around about you, if it's pots and pans or just body percussion. See what rhythms you can put in. Thinking about what Paul was talking about with rhythm. Think about what rhythms you can put into this song. So, here we go. There once was a band of young brass players Who came together without a care They blew and puffed and learned some tunes To make their wee hearts glow. Ho! We're here to have some fun Play great music till the day is done then when the blowing is done, some new songs we will know. So let us all take one big breath and we'll blow it out on the letter F. We're here to have some fun, play great music till the day is done. Then when the blowing is done, some new songs we will know. Our next breath out is on a nest. See who can beat all the rest. In we breathe, one, two, three, four, then let it out so slow. In. Go. We're here to have some fun, play great music till the day is done. 
Then when the blowing is done, some new songs we will know. Ha! Rhythm and pulse we've learned about, they're in our tune, there is no doubt. But see what other beats you can find from your head down to your toes. We're here to have some fun, play great music till the day is done. Then when the blowing is done, some new songs we will know. We're here to have some fun, play great music till the day is done. Then when the blowing is done, some new songs we will know. Great stuff, great stuff. Oh, I hope you enjoyed all that. I'm out of breath now. I don't know what's happening next. What's happening next? What's happening next? We're going to do some warming up with our tongues. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to hand over to Dee for some warming up with our tongues. Warming up with our tongues. Really important when we play our brass instruments that we have our pulse and our rhythm going. We have our breathing that we're thinking about and we have our tonguing that we are thinking about. So can you sing after me, please? It goes like this. Do, 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 your turn. Do, 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 do. My turn. Do, 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 your turn. Do, 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 do. Lovely. Now let's change that into tonguing and we're going to use ta. Are you ready? My turn, your turn. It's ta, 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 your turn. Ta, 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 ta. My turn. Ta, 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 your turn. Ta, 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 ta. We are ready to go. We're going to play a tune. Grab your instruments. If you are a B-flat instrument, you're going to be playing that rhythm using your F. If you are an E-flat instrument, you're going to be playing that rhythm using a C. And we have got a track to go with it. I'm going to play a couple of extra notes. Join me if you like to. Otherwise, join in this crew on the notes as they play them. Here we go. We are set to go with that. Paul, what's coming up next? What's coming up next? I don't know what's coming up next. <laughs> what's coming up next is that we are going to have um, some a guest. A guest is joining us. That's what we're going to do. Throughout the day, we're going to give you some wee breaks from us and from your screens to go off and just practice for a few minutes on your own. So here's the first one from a very good friend of ours, Mike Lovett. And Mike is a phenomenal trumpet player. And he's here to talk to you about breathing. We've already spoken a little bit about breathing, and we all know how to breathe, don't we? We do it all day, I hope. But have a listen to Mike and see how his ideas make your instruments sound. After Mike's video, there will be a five minute break for you to try out some of the tips and tricks he suggested. And after that, we'll be back for some playing all together again. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Mike Lovett. I'm a trumpet player. You probably guessed by this logo on here and the fact that I've now got a trumpet in my hand. What's inside here? What's inside this instrument? Well, there's a hole that goes all the way through in this tubing, isn't there? And there's a hole into the mouthpiece at this end. Well, what's inside? There's air in there. So when we play a brass instrument, do we have to actually fill it up? The answer to that, of course, is no, because we have to just get the air moving because movement of air and the movement of air within the instrument is what actually makes the vibration happen, the sound. It, it sends air back to our lips, reflected air, and makes them vibrate. So let's see, I'm gonna blow into the mouthpiece like this. And I'm gonna add the trumpet, let's see what happens. 
Wow, I know what happens because the air is moving inside. Some of it's been bouncing around and it comes back to the lips and sets up this vibration, a sound. That was a middle G. Let's work on how we can breathe in really well to make that sound really nice and open and relaxed. I'm going to breathe in two different ways and you see which one you think sounds best. So this is the first one. Hmm, this is the second one. Hopefully you'll notice just within my body that I'm so much more relaxed when I play the second note of the second way I breathed in, which was slowly and silently. When we do that, our throat is open. So it allows the air to come into our lungs. There's a vacuum there which sucks the air in, helps to suck all the air in. And then we just want to let that air come out. If I blow a balloon up like this, I'm holding the, the end of the balloon with my fingers so the air's not coming out. Imagine my fingers are my lips and I'm gonna let them open up just a bit. Now the air's just coming out on its own because of the elasticity of the balloon forcing the air out. Our lungs are like that, our intercostal muscles around here, our stomach muscles, our shoulders, everything will let the air come out. So breathe in nice and slowly, let the air come out. You can practice this by doing what I call a pew attack. So we're breathing in. And breathe out again. Like that. Relaxed in, relaxed out. Equals a lovely sound. I hope you have lots of fun trying to try these things out. Get a balloon, try it, blow it up, control the air with your fingers coming out and imagine that's what you're doing when you're playing. Have fun.
Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Fun Foundations with my lovely friends here, the Brass Foundations team from Brassburn, England. Hope you're having a good time. I hope you've managed to get into your kitchen, have a nice cup of tea or coffee or a drink of juice and a biscuit. We've got no biscuits, biscuits have we, guys? Oh. Terrible. It's very sad. But anyway, there we go. So, this next part of our day, we're going to give it to a form of music called the blues. Now, these guys have been saying to me, and we've been talking about it, what is the blues? And I'm wondering at home if you know what the blues is too. Okay, so, the blues originates way back when in 1860. Now, with my very bad maths, I think that's 160 years ago, deep down in the south of the US of A, when the workers in the fields would be working incredibly hard and they would sing their songs. And these songs would be really emotional, guys. And uh, they would be singing about the blues, what their troubles were, okay? And so there's many, many famous singers and instrumentalists over the last 160 years that have sang and performed the blues. I'm thinking of the great late Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, one of the most famous trumpet players that's ever lived. Uh, Winter Marsalis, my personal hero. Go and check Winter Marsalis out on YouTube talking about jazz. It's, and the blues specifically is amazing. Uh, and guitarist Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix, they all play the blues. And wow, could they play them. And today, we're going to teach you a little bit about the blues. Now, when I think about the blues, uh, I think about three notes because really it's three notes and three chords but it's based on a 12 bar sequence and I guess you guys are wondering well what's a bar so we know what a bar is think about your music that you play in your bands however many bars that might be a blues is always 12 bars long and it goes round and round and round in the same sequence using three chords okay it's always in four four so when we're thinking when we're in our bands we're one two three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, and four. You can get the gist. Okay, so we go 12 bars long. Now, there are three notes in our blues, as I've already told you, and I think about the blues a little bit like a train journey, okay? So let's think about our train. Will you help me with being a tra train, guys? So we're going to go... Okay, so for the B-flat instruments, our three notes are going to be C, F, and G, okay? And for the E flat instruments, your notes are going to be G, C, and D, okay? And those notes are the first, the fourth, and the fifth notes of our scales. So if you think about your C scale, C is the first note. F is the fourth note, and G is the fifth note, okay? E flat instruments, G is the first note, C is the fourth note, D is the fifth note, okay? So there are notes, okay? So it's gonna go something like this. Guys, can you help me? Would that be okay? So we're gonna go, so we're gonna do our C notes first. Now there are three kind of platform stations on our train journey, really, okay? The first one, is platform C, okay? So we're gonna go C, you ready? So four bars of C, okay, here we go. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Now we're gonna change to... So that's your F's and your B flats. Back to one. Now we're gonna go to the fifth note. G. F, F, and C. Okay, let's do that again. A one, two, three. So they are the three notes in our blues. It's as simple as that. So if you don't play anything else in the next part of the session, think about those three chords. It's the first chord, the fourth chord, and the fifth chord of our scales. 
Over to you, Dee. Oh, Paul, you got a question. Sorry. I've got a question. Are there other notes we could play? Of course Except there are instead other Instead of just notes. C, F and G, can we... We could. Well done, that's maybe? too... Well, there is a blue scale. I mean, that's getting a little bit complicated. In our normal scale, there are eight notes. La, 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 la. But in our blue scale, there are seven notes. No, I think that's right. <laughs> That's what a blue scale sounds like, okay? So you can kind of pick any notes, really, but whatever sounds good, Paul. To me, sure. I play yeah. what I feel and what I hear. I mean, if we played something really weird, that wouldn't sound right. So play what feels good to you, and if it sounds musically and lyrically correct, then that's great. Over to you, Dee. We're going to learn to play a blues now, and it's called Sea Jam Blues, a really famous one. So you can look that up later and see lots of different people playing their version of Sea Jam Blues. Always when we learn a new piece, a great thing to do is sing it through first. So we're ready to sing. It goes like this. I'm going to sing it for you. This is called the head of the music, and we're going to keep coming back to it. And it's got a pattern that repeats three times. So I'll sing it through once. Join me on the second and third time. It goes like this. Do da, do da, do da, do da. Sing it with me, here we go. And do da, do da, do da, do da. And the last time, here it is. Do da, do da, do da, do da. Let's do the whole head again. And do da, do da, do da, do da. And a one, two, here it is. Do da, do da, do da, do da. Do da, do da, do da, do da. Hey, D. I noticed that was 12 bars, but it's a little bit faster than I did it, isn't it? But it's still the same 12 still bars. Still 12 bar well, blues. Still and did you fantastic. notice how many notes that had in it? Five, Paul's having a count. Two. Just two notes. So the notes that you're going to need, if you are a B flat instrument, you're going to need a G and a C. If you're an E flat instrument, you're going to need a D and a G. And it doesn't matter if you play the high ones or the low ones. Play whichever is in your range. First thing we're going to do, though, is the track's going to come on and we're going to sing it along with the track. So let's have a go at doing that. And one, two, here we go. And do da, 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 do da. One more time. Are you clicking with us as well? Do da, do da, do da. Fantastic. Next time, we're going to play. So get your instruments ready. And a reminder, if you're a B-flat instrument, you've got Gs and Cs. If you're an E-flat instrument, you'll be on D and G, which is playing with Paul over here. Are we ready? Here we go. going to keep coming back to that head so if you see me do this or count you in a shower head you know that that's the bit we're going to play we're now going to do some improvising improvising is really big in jazz music and in the blues and we're going to give it a go now who knows what improvising is I go do, on paul i do it's improvising playing what you feel like paul says but it's got to fit with the music that's playing behind it's you got to fit with the music because if it doesn't you might end up with something that sounds like this <laughs> 
So we think about those oh. notes that Paul talked about because we don't want that. We think about our, our notes from that first chord and the second chord and the third chord, but we just use our ears and play what works. So we're going to do, firstly, some call and response improvising. So I'm going to play something and you're going to copy me. Something like this. Can we give a demonstration? I might play this. <laughs> And then I might go head, and we're going to go back to the head and play. So this is some improvising using call and response this time. So here we go. We're going to play the head first. And a one, two, a one, two, here we go. enjoyed doing that. Next, Did we're going to... Before you move on, oh. sorry to jump in like that. Go I noticed it. that when we were doing that, that we don't actually <coughs> need to move our slides or our valves to be able to improvise. Not at all. You can just stay on the same... So for us trombone players, we stayed in first position. And for you guys, you just use no valves, but you can still improvise using the notes that are available to us without pressing any buttons or moving any slides, which is really cool. All we need is different rhythms Absolutely. to make it interesting. Amazing. Love Fantastic. It. We're going to make it slightly more challenging this time. So instead of doing a call and response, we're going to do a question and answer like this. We're going to give a wee example. Paul, what did you have for dinner last night? I had fish and chips tea. Ooh, what did you have for dinner, Paul? I had a gun and steak, do you? Gun and steak, Ooh, nice. lovely. So I asked the question, they gave me an answer. If we were doing that on our instruments, it might sound like this. <laughs> so Paul didn't copy me, he answered me. Let's try it with this, Paul. Gammon and, ste gammon and steak, was it? Yeah, All right, let's see if that's the answer. <laughs> answered me so this time it's going to be your go to do that we're not going to play anything in the rests where the answer comes because you are going to improvise and as Paul said you can improvise on one note you can improvise on all the notes that you know just make sure that you're fitting it in with what we are doing and a really good thing is to use lots of repeated patterns when you do it because that helps it make sense we're going to play the head and then we're going to go into some questions and answers so here we go Ready, one, two, one, two, three, up. <laughs> 
try doing that absolutely let's, let's do it. give it a go so we're going to play the track for the last time we're going to play the head let's just keep that nice and clean together the next time the verse comes through see if you can copy what we're doing and play some bits in between you are improvising there are no wrong notes so choose your notes have a go at it play lots of repeated patterns they can be as wild and crazy as we like here mm -hmm. we go So I hope you enjoyed it. It's it's really, really fun thing to do 
to learn to play without music. And I can honestly tell you, as a musician, that when I was a, a young boy and a young lad, I never, ever played without the music. I was very, very stuck on the music. That's how I was taught, and that's absolutely brilliant. But there is another world out there in the musical world where you don't need any music and you can use your ears. And if as musicians, we can balance both of those tricks where we can really be very, very good at reading music, because let me tell you, as British musicians, it's very, very important that we read very, very quite quickly and fast because that's a real skill. But also to be able to step away from the music stand and use our ears and our eyes to do the sort of exercise that we've just done with D. So I'm gonna carry on a little bit along that line. There isn't any music, guys, for this next one either. I'm really, really sorry about that. Uh, but this is a really fabulous tune uh, made famous by a fantastic artist called James Brown, okay? Yeah. The Godfather of Soul. And he was an amazing artist, very, very lively on stage and an incredible act to go and watch. He had an amazing hit, okay? Now, are you feeling good this morning? Yeah. Are you feeling good this morning? Are all the people out there feeling good this morning? Yeah. Excellent, that's great news because I am feeling good, okay? And it just so happens that that's the name of the next tune. This is James Brown hit, I Feel Good, okay? It's really, really straightforward. What I want you to do, I want it to be my backing horn section for this next part. That's another great job you can have as a brass musician. I'm very lucky to be able to do that sometimes. And uh, it's great fun, okay? So. The most important thing about the next five minutes is for us to continue having fun. And really, the only notes that we need for this one are, if you're a B flat instrument, you need your C, B, C, B, C. So if you're a trombone player, you're gonna use uh, first and second position. Like that, okay? If you're a valved instrument and you're a B flat instrument, you're gonna go C, B, C, B, C, B, C, just like Sheila so beautifully demonstrated. If you're an E flat horn, you are going to play G, F sharp G, F sharp G, F sharp G, as Paul just beautifully demonstrated. There are seven notes in the sequence. Now, I don't want you to tongue every one of those notes. Dee did a brilliant tonguing exercise with us before. I only need you to tongue the first note. And then I want you to focus about that breath that Paul was talking about earlier, where we blow the air through the phrase. So we're gonna go, da. It's just like singing. Brass playing is so similar to singing. So if you can think like a singer, so when we play, so we're gonna go, that's our phrase. Seven notes, da, and it goes round and round and round. There's another little bit towards the end of the chorus, which is a bit that's got four kind of karate chops. You can change the notes if you want. You can play B flat instruments, you can play D, D, rest, rest, C, C, E flat instruments, you can play A, A, rest, rest, G, G, okay? But I'll come to that, and what I'll do, boys and girls, I will give you four karate chops so you get Chop, chop, bang, bang, chop, chop. So look out for my karate chop, is that okay? I am the karate king for this <laughs> tune. Okay, so, did I say karate king? I meant karate king, sorry. Okay, so this is I Feel Good, and we're all gonna play the backings the first time through. So let's see how we get on. Here we go, James Brown, I Feel Good. They're fantastic. Now, how did you get on at home? I think you did probably pretty well because it's straightforward, isn't it? Oh, okay. What were the karate chop notes? So the karate chop notes for you were A A G G, and okay. for us B flat instruments they were D D C C. And I'm really sorry because I forgot to cue you, so that was my bad, and I'm very sorry. Uh, sorry about that, everybody. Okay, so that's the first bit that we need to do. Now you're probably thinking, God, this is easy. Okay. So similar to what we did before with the blues, there aren't that many chords. In fact, if you think about pop songs, right, from when this was written in the 50s and the 60s to now, 
pop songs don't have many chords. It's really straightforward. And so we're just gonna go from a couple of different chords, okay? So if you're a B flat instrument, you can think about starting on a C, an E, or a G, okay? And if you're a E flat instrument, you can start thinking about a G, B, and a D. And you'll probably notice that you're moving a semitone down and up the whole time. So you can just do the same sequence again. So why don't we try it for the second time? And maybe you guys pick a different note, okay? And you guys at home pick a different note. So remember, you've got C, E, and G. Uh, or if you're an E flat instrument, you're gonna pick G, B, or D, okay? And listen to where the bass line goes, okay? And if you feel that your note might change, that's cool. Let's do it. Hit the music. So I hope that you're finding that easy enough at home. It's straightforward. It's really interesting to listen to that bass line. And if you can follow the bass line, it's going to really help you with where you're going to go next. And you'll notice that we're training our ears all the time, guys, aren't we? And so your ear will let your valves, your fingers, muscle memory, and our slides just go to the right place because that's how fantastic ears can be. Okay, so now this time I thought uh, I'm going to play the tune now. Is that okay? So if I play the tune on the top, you do the backing. Uh, you guys carry on doing the backing at home. Again, pick your notes, gonna do it one more time through, and then I've got one more thing to add after that. Hit the music. Here I go with the tune. Well done. How was that going? All good? Yeah. Cool. All right. So that's fantastic. Now, one thing that really worries me, sometimes we can be in our band practices and we might be feeling like we are feeling good and like we're having great fun. But you know what I mean? Sometimes you look at bands and ensembles and they don't look like they're having fun, do they? So we, have you noticed that nowadays we don't listen to a record? We don't put we watch, we go to our YouTube and we watch things because so much is visual, okay? So we need to be visually really fun for our audiences, okay? So this time, guys, I want us to do some moves. Is that okay? So this time what we're gonna do, and you guys at home, uh, we're gonna go, I feel left, da na 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 freeze. I knew that I, right, da na 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 freeze. I feel good, da na 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 freeze. And I knew that I, right, da na 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 freeze. To the middle for the karate shots. Ba, ba, da, da. And keep really, really still. Try and keep your feet still and swivel using your hips, okay? And then there won't be, well, if there's only you in your living room, then that's fine, but we don't want any accidents, do we, <laughs> That would be terrible if we had some slide clashing going on. Okay, so we're gonna go to the left first, okay? Here we go, hit the music for the last time.
Fantastic gang. That was awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you managed to keep up. I hope you played some of the different notes in the chord too. Uh, that brings us to the end of that little session. What have we got next, gang? We've, We've got a little got break for you, okay? We, uh, have. we have, oh, haven't we? That's right. So, <laughs> let's go. We do have. We hope that you have enjoyed learning about the blues and trying out some improvising. It's a really great idea if you can keep practicing your improvising at home so that you get more confident and more adventurous with it. It's also a great idea to start listening to other people play the blues so you get new ideas and learn different ways of doing it. Check out people like Miles Davis, like Winter Marsalis and Trombone Shorty. It's now time for you to have a screen and instrument break. Grab yourself a snack and a drink. Be back here ready for the next session, which starts at 11.15. When you come back, we'll have another video from one of our special guests, Luke Barker, who is the solo corner at the Flowers Band. We'll see you then.
Hi everybody, it's Luke here from the Flowers Band. As you can see, I play the cornet. And today, I'm going to be taking you through your second challenge, which is going to focus on articulation. Now, you may be thinking, what on earth is articulation? And that's a really good question. What is articulation? Articulation simply refers to the way that we play uh, the, the front of the note. So whether we attack it to create a short spiky note, which we call staccato, or whether we approach it in a more relaxed way and play a slur, which is a smooth joined together note. You may have seen these, these two styles in music which you've played or looked at. Um, so staccatos are shown by dots above or below the notes and slurs are shown by the, the lines which go uh, below or above the notes as well. So today I'm going to show you the difference between slurs and staccatos using a C shanty, which you probably will recognise. Uh, it's been made famous through TikTok uh, very, very recently, and it's called the Wellerman. So I'm now going to play uh, a section of this piece from B to C, eight bars long, in two different ways. One staccato and one slurred. And I want to see if you can tell the difference between them. So here's number one. you can. So number one was staccato, short spiky notes. Number two, it was slurred. They were long, they were smooth notes, all joined together. So you may be thinking, how do we do this? And that's a really good question as well. So staccato notes are using our tongue inside our mouth, okay? And we can think about this by saying duh, 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 duh. Have a go. What happens to your tongue when you say da? It comes to the front of your mouth, doesn't it? So we can feel our tongue moving towards our teeth, which is what happens when we play. And that creates a short, spiky note, other note otherwise known as staccato. Thinking about slur, slurs join two notes together. So we can say dia, 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 dia. Have a go at that. How does that feel? The tongue doesn't move to the front of the mouth like it does when we say duh, does it? So when we play a slur, we keep the air blowing and moving using good support from our diaphragm and big breath before we play, uh, which joins the notes together and makes them sound really smooth. OK, so now we're going to have a go using the little section that I just played to you two times. What we're going to do first to get the idea of the articulation is we are going to sing it. Well, not sing it at pitch, because you won't want to hear me do that. Um, but just to say the articulation, so that's using da and dia, which we just practiced. Okay, so from letter B, I'm going to sing it once using the correct articulation written down, so of staccatos and slurs. To so I'm going to demonstrate it once, and then I want to see if you can join in with me. So I'll do it again and I'll count you in after four. OK, so here goes. Da 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 ya da 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 ya da 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 ya da 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 ya da 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 ya. OK, have a go with me now after four. One, two, three, four. Da 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 ya da da da. Da 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 ya da 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 ya da 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 ya da 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 ya. Good. So hopefully you can feel and think about the difference in your with your tongue in your in your mouth, and the difference between the slurs and the staccato. 
Now, there's one last step, isn't there? And that's playing. So we're going to have a go playing this little phrase here. Remember, when we play, we need to think about breathing really well. So taking a good breath, imagine filling a tank of air through your legs into your, your lungs and your torso and your, and your stomach. Okay, we need to concentrate and yeah, have fun. Okay, here goes. After four. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's try once more. One, two, three, four. So just as we as we said it, we now play it. So the da da and the da ya da ya da ya. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense, and you've learned something today. It's not something just relevant to this piece. It will be relevant to you in your playing throughout your whole life. Okay. So hopefully you've enjoyed what I've said, and hopefully you've learned something. Okay. Keep practicing and enjoy making music. Bye. Welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed your break and are ready to go for the next session of the day. We've mentioned a couple of times already this morning that we'll be looking at the Wellerman. We've had a brass band version of this tune arranged just for today's workshop. So now I'm going to hand you over to Matt Kingston who did the arrangement for us to tell us a little bit more about the piece. After that we'll be doing some more playing so make sure to have your music and instruments ready in a few minutes time. Hi, I'm Matt Kingston of Big Shiny Brass and I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my arrangement of the Wellerman, which you'll be playing today. So you've probably seen the fantastic YouTube video of Nathan Evans performing this song, uh, which has become a massive, massive hit around the world and got to number one in the charts. But did you know this song's actually around about 150 years old? It's a sea shanty from New Zealand and would have been sung on board the whaling ships. Now, these old style sailing ships, so many jobs the sailors need to do involve rhythm, whether they're pulling up the anchor, or pulling the ropes to hoist up the sail, or stomping around in a circle around the capstan. They need to do it all in time. So they'd have had a shantyman who'd have sung these songs, and he'd have kept a strong rhythmic beat going to keep the sailors in time with their jobs. Now, one of the things I really love about sea shanties, they often start with just this one voice singing, and then a lovely rich harmony comes in when you get to the chorus. And of course, aboard the ship, this is when all the crew would have joined in. It's something I think works really well when played by brass instruments. You can have a couple of instruments playing and then suddenly the full band bursts into life and we can all get excited when we get to that chorus each time. I've also included, of course, a lot of the foot stomping to keep you in time and hopefully one day soon when we get to play in front of audiences they can join in with that bit and stomp along to keep the beat. So what is a Wellerman? Well, back in the 1830s there were three brothers from England Edward, George and Joseph Weller, who sailed to New Zealand and made their fortune by buying a fleet of ships that would sail around the, the whaling stations and to the whaling boats with supplies. So it must have just been amazing, having been at sea for weeks on end, to see on the horizon this Wellerman ship appearing with sugar and tea and most importantly, fresh supplies of rum. So that was Matt Kingston, who arranged the Wellerman for us. He's great. He's a really nice fella, and his music is fabulous. So we're going to do some work on the Wellerman now. But before we do any rehearsal for it, we're just going to play it through once. So get your music. Doesn't matter if you make mistakes. Doesn't matter if things don't quite work. Let's go all the way through it once. And then when we've played it once, we'll come back and we'll work on little bits. Now, some of the parts, so the, uh, the cornet parts, and the second horn, the second trombone and the bass parts, at the beginning, you've not got notes. You've got little crosses marked. And it says, stomp feet. So we want you to really stomp your feet. If you live in a flat, annoy your downstairs neighbours. If you're in your bedroom up the stairs, annoy your mum and dad. But no sitting down. We want to hear big stompy feet. So let's go once through the track, once through the piece, and then we'll come back and we'll do some work. One, two, 
a one and two. such a fantastic piece I'm going to be singing it all the way home so let's have a look at a few parts of that we're going to start at the end more or less because that's what we do um, so let's have a look at letter G letter G now at letter G we're almost playing the same rhythms all the way down the band there are one or two parts that I've got a quaver where everybody else has perhaps a, a crotchet but pretty much all the parts are exactly the same so let's listen to the cornets and horns. When I say listen, I mean play. I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen to my cornets and horns in the room and uh, cornet players and horn players. Let's go from letter G. Okay, think about the way you're playing the notes. We've got dots under some of them and not under others. So really concentrate on that. Here we go. Um, cornets and horns. One, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> Great stuff. So you see some of the notes are short, some of them are a little bit longer. And it's really important when we're reading a piece of music that we read these things as well as the notes. Matt has put them in here for a reason. So let's be kind to Matt and play what he wants. So can we have the bottom end this time? So uh, trombones um, and tuba, basically. So this is from letter G. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> So we always hear that yum pom 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 pee at the end of the phrase, don't we? Let's put all that together now. Where do we think the important parts are? Whose part do you think is most important there, Dee? Who do you think's got the melody there? Always the trombones. Always the trombones. <laughs> yeah, always the trombones. <laughs> or is it the euphonium, <laughs> Helen? Always the euphonium. I bet you Sheila probably thinks it's the cornice. Oh, I know it's the cornice. You know it's the cornice. <laughs> it's okay. So I'll use these again. Paul was talking about this earlier. We've got to really listen to what's going on around about us. And if you think you're... I happen to think that the tuba part is the most important part because you're never going to play properly without the tuba sitting underneath. Um, but I know that I'm not really the biggest, most important thing in this bit. So think about where your uh, voice is, where your musical voice is in the mix. Let's go again then, from letter G, one, two, or one, two, three, go. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Now we've almost learned half the piece. Just by doing that section, we said when we sang it at the beginning, it's a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, 
model, isn't it? Pattern. Um, so we've learned pretty much half the piece in a few minutes. So let's scoot back towards the beginning and have a look at letter D for delightful. Um, and we're going to do letter D without the first horn and without the first trombone. Sorry, not that. But you'll come back in. Your chance will come. So can we have letter D? It's a similar kind of uh, pattern, isn't it? It's, a, it's the same part of the song. So let's play this, but without trombone one and horn one. Here we go. From letter D. And listen to the bass part. Just because. But listen to the bass part. What do you think the bass part might be indicating? It's different from the first time we played. So listen along. Here we go. Letter D. Everybody except first horn, first trombone. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> It's a kind of moving part there, isn't it? What do we think that might be? It's like swaying. It's like the boat, doesn't it? It's like the boat swaying away there. Good. So let's put the horn and the trombone back in there and see if you can hear who has the melody this time. Letter D, everybody. One, two, nine, six, eight, four. melody there was in the trombone and in the horn so that swaying of the boat it's just another little thing that arrangers put in to pieces of music just to paint different pictures sometimes good and then we'll move back again a little bit further to letter a so we've got second horn and second trombone here and we need to think about the length of all these notes so they're not sort of two beats they're not kind of minims ish they are absolutely two beats, and they finish on... What beat does a minimum finish on if it's on the first two beats, Paul? Beat three. Beat three. So all the way to beat three. So let's hear second horns, second trombone um, from letter A. One, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> Should we do that again? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that again. And really think in quavers, maybe. So instead of playing one, two, oh, I've come off too early. One, two, three, four. And we'll come off in exactly the right place. Let's put the first horn and the first trombone on this time as well. Letter A, one, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> Good. So really long notes, long, long notes when you've got them. Um, and then we go to letter B, which suddenly gets a bit cheerier, doesn't it? Because it's a little bit sad in places, this piece of music. So letter B, let's hear the cornets and the horns. Oh, let's hear the cornets, because the horns are back to stamping your feet, and the trombones are back to stamping your feet. So cornets, letter B, a little bit cheerier. I want to three, go. <laughs> Excellent, lovely sound at the end. And again, we've got long notes, slurs this time, as well as the staccato. So let's read everything, everything, everything. And the tune is also in the bass part here. Now that doesn't happen very often, doesn't happen nearly often enough, but the tune is in the tubas as well here. So if you're playing the bass part, let's really bring it out. It adds just a different color. So let's do letter B again, and I'll put the tuba part in. Are we ready? <coughs> oh, one, two, I want to three, go. <laughs> Lovely. So it makes just a real different mix there, isn't there? A real different flavour when the tuba is playing the tune along with uh, the cornet. Now, letter C. So we're moving back into the piece now. Letter C has something else. We haven't seen this yet. What is marked at letter C? D, what does it say underneath? Fortissimo. Fortissimo. So does that mean we just razz it as loud and hard as we can? We probably shouldn't. Mm. 
<laughs> so we've still got to be in control, don't we? Think we might. We're let go here. The composer, the, the arranger has let us go here. Double 40, off you go. But it's still got to be musical. Always got to be musical. The dynamics are not uh, a license just to blow your trombone straight. Okay, so let's have a go then at letter C. Let's feel how loud we can play it, but still <coughs> remaining musical. And remember that we don't want to break the technology, so we need to play down a little bit. One, two, I want to. <laughs> something funny at the end there what's that underneath the last note paul it looks like a scribble or something it looks what's like that? an accent an to me, accent paul. and yeah. how do we play accents what's that all about well it just means we're Ooh, nice. exactly what i had and said yeah. we just need to hit that note a little bit harder don't we so is that Tong just a kind of blart well no tongue it nice and strong but with a good push from our diaphragm there we go can we just try the last two bars at letter c then so the last two bars at letter c here we go one Oh. Yeah, nice. So always, always, always controlled. Um, we tend to, trombone players have an awful habit of playing uh, accents like somebody dropping a box of cutlery down oh, the stairs, oh, don't they? It just goes <laughs> boosh, you know? So just really always musical, always in control. I play trombone too, I'm allowed to say that. Um, great, so letter F then. We're charging through this piece now. Letter F, we've got the music moving around different instruments. So the tune doesn't always stay in the same instrument all the way through this section. It moves around. So back to what we were saying earlier on about think about where your voice is in the whole score. It's not always going to be the cornets that have got the tune. It's not always going to be the bass that's got the bass line. So really think about what you're playing and listen, listen, listen to um, what's going on round about you. So can we hear, can we hear the first trombone um, and the cornets at letter F? First trombone and cornets at letter F. And just listen to where the tune might be going. One, two, I want two, three, four. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got another accent there, don't we? But it's not on a, a shock note, it's on a nice long note. So we hit the front of that note and we blow all the way through. Good. Let's put everybody else on then at letter F and be really listening to what your part is doing in the mix. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Now, I want to try something with the first trombone, with the first horn, well, in fact, with everybody. In the fourth bar, and in the one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh bar, we've got crotchets. Now, we naturally play bum, 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 because that's what we have in different parts, but there's nothing marked here. So let's try it one more time from F, and play long, full-length crotchets, and see the difference that might make to the sound. One, two, one, two, three. <gasps> so it's a different sound, isn't it? Again, it's about looking at the music really closely and seeing what the arranger or what the composer has given us to do. Um, now, the last little bit of rehearsal we're going to do is at letter E. So now there's something different happens in the tune here. So the tune has just been messed about with slightly. Remember we said way back at the start of this morning that the Weller Man is a sea shanty. It's a folk song. And it was originally just sung. Nobody wrote it down. Nobody sat and played it on a piano. It was sung by guys on the ship to help them pull ropes and things like that. And then somebody came along and thought, oh, I like that. I want to be able to do that again. 
So they've scribbled it down. And what Matt's done here is that he's just moved the tune around a little bit, moved the rhythm of the tune around a little bit. So have a real listen, round about bar four of letter E. Um, and see what he's done with the tune. It's just slightly different. So letter E then, please. So that's uh, first cornet, first horn, and first trombone. One, two, or one, two, three, four. <laughs> It's just a little bit different, a little bit. And it can sometimes catch you out that you get into the way of it and you think, I know this tune now, and you're playing along quite merrily, and suddenly it changes, and you think, oh, oops, missed. So concentration. Right, we're going to finish with the rhythm. So the rhythm section that's written here, it's a bit kind of <coughs> samey, isn't it? It's a bit simple. So why don't you think about what we can do? Maybe when there's only the two instruments playing the tune, it can be nice and straightforward, nice and simple, as it's written. Maybe when it mixes up a little bit and gets a bit louder, then we can bring in different things. Um, so have a think about that. And let's just play through. Shall we just play the whole thing through one more time and really think about what you're going to do with the rhythm? Can we go right from the very beginning, everybody together, big stomps when you've got them, think about the length of your notes, think about the staccatos, think about where the tune sometimes changes, think about where you are in the big mix and listen to what's going on round about you. So here we go once more from the very beginning. Everybody. One, two, a one and two. Fabulous. Okay, so we're going to finish our morning now. I'm going to hand back to Dee and to Paul. Fantastic. Thank you for that, Paul. That was fantastic. I really enjoyed that tune, and I know that all the way back to London later, I'm going to be humming that on the tune, <laughs> on the track. So thank you. Okay, so we thought we would finish our morning with a tune that you would all know. Now, bad news for my Brass Foundations team again. There is no music, gang. You've got to use your ears again at home, so I'm sorry there is no music, but it's really, really easy because this tune uses notes that you've been playing for years and years and years, I'm absolutely sure. If you can play B, C, D, and E on a B flat instrument, so for us trombones, B, C, D, E, and for the cornets, B, C, D, E, okay? That's gonna be fantastic. Uh, E flat instruments, we've got to get this right. So you're going to play F sharps, G's, A's, and B's. Okay, so that's F sharps, G's, A's, and B's. Okay, they're the notes that um, the majority of this tune, and it's a tune that we can march to. Now, 
I know that my brass band love marching. And when I grew up, I loved marching, okay? And it's really important that we march brilliantly. Where, uh, the thing to remember, if you watch the Coldstream Guards or the Royal Marines, any of those bands or the British Army bands that we'll be listening to later, they count. So this whole thing right at the very beginning of the morning where we were talking about counting, it's very important that we think about our counting. So, uh, I'm just trying to think of a tempo, okay? So can we all join me? So what we're gonna do, team, we're gonna, we're gonna walk, march 16 beats, okay? But on beat 16, you've gotta stop, okay? Are you ready? Do you think you can do that? So I don't wanna hear any 17th step. Okay, here we go. Attention! By the left, quick march! One, two, three, four, five, six, Very good, not bad. Now at home, did you stop or did you start? Let's do it one more time, you ready? Attention, by the left, quick march! One, two, three, four, keep the count. Fantastic, and then the key to play, playing along with marching is really difficult, but we'll come to that. So this tune was made famous by a Scottish pop band. Boo, Boo hiss, Boo. no, I'm joking. We all love the Scots. Called The Proclaimers, and it's called 500 Miles. Now, we haven't got room in this room to march 500 miles today, have we? But I'd love to teach you the tune, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the track on, and uh, us guys are gonna play for you the verse of that tune, okay? Uh, so here we go. Remember your notes, B flat instruments, you need B, C, D, E. You don't need any other notes apart from that. Keep your eyes on Sheila and Helen's valves and Paul's valves, B flat instruments, and trombone players, keep your eyes on D and I slide, okay? So this is the verse of 500 miles. Let's have some sound. You did really, really well. Thank you. Now, I want us to take us back to what we talked about in the blues. Remember when we did the blues? And we talked about the bass line, okay? Now, the bass line, I'm wondering if Paul can help me here, is really, really simple in this one, okay? So, would you like to play it to me? Three, okay, it's three notes again, okay? So it's G, C, D, G, okay? So, that would be fantastic. Okay, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Now, let's go for that. Now, the next part of the song, okay, is kind of called the, uh, the bridge. Okay, now, what does a bridge normally do in life? When we cross a bridge, what does it do? It Give connects me two things up. Oh, Helen, thank you so much. It connects two things up. And so many pop songs, they have this bridge. So we have the verse, and then we have a bridge section which links us to the chorus, okay? <laughs> so we need to think about the bridge. Now, the bridge is really simple. It's just kind of a few, few notes. It's D, G, D, 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 G, D, D, C, B, A, A, okay? Follow your ears, okay? That's for the B flat instruments, okay? So for the E flat instruments, you're gonna go, a D A A A A A A A D A A G F E E something like that. Okay, right. Phew, I've got the tick from the E flat department. That's good. Okay, so we're going to go from the beginning again. We're going to get our marching, and we're going to go from. We're going to do the verse, and we're going to play the bridge as well. Okay, uh, and then we'll stop, and I'll teach you a little bit of the chorus. Okay, gang, are we ready? Ready. So we're going to do the verse and the bridge. Here we go. Remember guys at home, if you don't get it wrong, right, first time, it doesn't matter, okay? The more times we do it, the more times you'll get it right. And be confident. If you're getting 50% of it right, that's awesome. If you're getting 75% of it right, amazing. Just do your best and have fun. Hit it.
bottom, okay? Now, did we all get the bridge okay? Fantastic, so that's good, well done team. Then we go all the way back to the head again. So you'll see me doing this, guys and girls, okay? Which is what D did earlier, because this always means the head. If you watch TV and you watch jazz artists and improvisers on the TV, uh, you'll often see them doing this and you think, what on earth are they doing? Then, well, now you know. They're just going back to the head, okay? So, that's our <laughs> verse and our bridge, okay? The last little bit that comes when we get to the end of this tune is the bit that goes, la, 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 okay? La. There you go. It's you got it, okay? It's a call and response again, okay? So, listen out for it. I'm not going to tell you what the notes are because I think but by now in the morning... We should have a feel for, for what we're doing, okay? And it's really, really useful to get to know our instruments and to feel and learn where we are on our instruments. And you're allowed to make mistakes. I think it's very important that we, we own our mistakes, okay? And do the best you can. So just let's try and do the whole track, okay? And, and see how we get on and see if you get to the end with us. But just go with your ear, okay? Uh, cool. Sarah, can you hit it? Thank you. miles played by us and played by you now I know that we didn't complete all of that tune but I'm trusting you at home that you got into the groove and you just followed your ears and that's kind of what this morning's all been about about listening to what's going on around you and trusting your instrument and the knowledge that you've already got of your instrument we really hope that you've enjoyed your morning with us we can't wait to spend the afternoon with you but thank you so much for being with us this morning and uh I'm going to hand over to Sarah now, but uh, catch up with you later. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've absolutely loved being here. How much have we loved being here this morning? <laughs> everyone watching, how much have you loved being here this morning? Yes, it was loud. I could hear it. Um, if 
you haven't had enough today and you feel like you need more, please do stay on because at 12.30, after we've all had a little bit of a lunch break, we're going to be seeing from a, a few performances, a handful of different performances from the British Army musicians. They're amazing. There's not just brass. There's all sorts of really, really fun, interesting stuff and some pop tunes and all different sorts of things. So there's a series of performances there for you to enjoy at 12.30. I know some of you have registered for both the morning and the afternoon sessions, which is brilliant. So we're looking forward to seeing you again then. Um, the next afternoon session is a bit more challenging. Um, we're doing some different things and we're doing some more pieces. So make sure you've got them ready. Um, again, if there's any problems, if you haven't got the pieces that, you've, that you need, just send us an email at events at bbe.org.uk and you can find that email in the description of the video. Thanks so much, team, for having, giving me an amazing morning watching you and everyone at home. And we'll be back at 1pm. See you then.
chance, we make our plans, we wait for better times. Live through our fears, hold back the tears, we shudder at goodbyes. And though the spring is nearly done, we see the daisies grow, the birds fly under the setting sun, but we wait for now, for better times to come. Told your time is at an end. So call alone, you're on your own. Goodbye, my dearest friend. And as your time is nearly done, you fade into the April winds and the setting sun. But we wait for now, for better times to come. Would you say what if I had told you just wait another day? We run, we walk, but still we talk with time that's on our hands. But still we feel the time we still was never in our plans. And though there are things to be done. Sit back and raise a glass under the setting sun, but we wait for now. But we wait for now. But we wait for now. For better times to come. Right mind to worry, am I in the right mind to worry? You're keeping yourself to yourself. Am I in the right mind to worry? I'm hanging on, don't hurry. Or are you happy on your own? Are you happy on your own? Well, don't let them hold you down. I go kicking and screaming. We can run around this town. Once more with feeling, 
It's all just like days of old When we never did anything we were told Don't you let them mold you down I'll go kicking and screaming We can run around this town Once more with feeling Kicking and screaming Till we're upside down We're upside down Upside down We're upside down We're upside down And we want to be As far as we can from reality Distance ourselves from sobriety But the price The price is just too high So don't let them hold you down I'll go kicking and screaming We can run around this town Once more with feeling And just like days of old When we never did anything we were told Don't you let them mold you Down I go kicking and screaming We can run around this town Once more with feeling And just like days of old When we never did anything we were told Don't you let them mold you Down I go kicking and screaming We can run around this town Once more with feeling Kicking and screaming Till we're upside down My name is Lance Corfell and Chaloner. I play percussion and I started at age seven, grew up in Sunderland and learnt with a local drum teacher and then joined brass bands from there. I'm Corporal Perry Delgaudio O'Brien. I started playing corn at the age of nine when a local brass band came to the school. They offered me a seat. So having no formal music education, I learnt my skills as a player in um, the local brass bands. I'm Lance Corporal Matthew Taylor. I started playing the cornet at the age of seven, progressed through the ranks of high school, and then my father said to me that my mouth was too big, so I ended up playing a, a bigger instrument and he gave me the baritone horn. My name's Corporal Tom Chaloner. I started the clarinet in North Wales to the county music service and I quickly saw the light and went on to trombone. I'd heard from a few friends that had joined previously um, that it was a really good career and I'd seen them go through the process. I decided to try it after I'd been teaching for a couple of years. I first heard about British Army music when I was studying at college. I thought it sounded like the best job opportunity. Having grown up in brass bands, it just seemed perfect. I finished A-levels and went into retail, uh, worked there for a year while my application went through. And after seeing an advert online for the Coldstream Guards Band, I applied uh, and a year later started. I've been all over the world with this job so far. Um, I went to uh, Canada with the Grenadier Guards Band. That was a really great tour. The uh, Queen's Diamond Jubilee in 2012 and I also played for the Olympics uh, with the Grenadier Guards Band. Definitely the best experience in British Army music has got to be um, travelling to America with British Army Brass Band. To share the stage with musicians from all around the world at the top level is just something that I wouldn't have that opportunity anywhere else. So some of my favourite um, venues that I've played for in this job is the Royal Albert Hall with the London Concert Orchestra. It was just such a, a great occasion and something I've never done before. I've worked with a short-term training team in Uganda. I've toured Japan twice and also Australia um, with a Sydney tattoo.
Army is big on leadership and various AT courses. A lot of them uh, I've spent in Wales. Climbing Snowdon and going up the various trails like Crib Gork, it leads you to develop your leadership and become more confident in yourself. The Army's given me more travel opportunities than I could ever imagine. I've been water skiing in Cyprus, all at heavily subsidised rates. I've been skiing um, and I've been whitewater rafting in Canada and all sorts of other adventure training there as well. And these are things that I wouldn't have done before I joined the Army. Outside of music, the Army's given me opportunities to travel the world. Paragliding. I've gained all sorts of qualifications as a pilot, just having fun, travelling, jumping off mountains. You know, it's a bit different from the, uh, the musical norm, but you know, these are the kind of things that we get the opportunity to do. What's great about this job is every day is different. There's no one day the same. You're working with like-minded people who are very much into music. Army music gives us stability, especially at our times now. And I would say for those who play brass bands, this is you know, a great opportunity to develop yourself. I would say it's a really great way to make a living. I get paid to do what I love. I never imagined that my hobby in music would be um, something I did for a living. If I had a piece of advice for anyone interested in a career in music, I would say just do it. Join British Army Music, travel the world, get paid to do what you love doing as a musician.
Hello and welcome to the Fun Foundations live streamed workshop day or welcome back if you joined us this morning because I know some people are here with us for the whole day because they've really committed. Um, but if you are just joining us now, welcome. We are so excited to spend this afternoon with you. Um, now we know that some of you will have had online lessons over the last year. Some of you might have been able to play at school. Some of you might not have been able to play at all. But it doesn't matter because we welcome you all regardless of it. All we need from you today is to enjoy yourself, have a blow and get excited about the idea of playing together as a group, hopefully very, very soon. There's no pressure here. We just want you to have a blow and enjoy it. And it's going to be fun. And anyone who was here for the morning session can attest to that. Was this morning fun? Yes. Yes, yes it was. Um, so obviously for us, being here and being spaced and running this is, is strange and new, but that's okay because I think that's what the last year has taught us that we can try out new things and it will be all right and it will be fun. So that is what we want, the energy that we want from you today is to give something new a go. And we're just really excited to be here together because yesterday was the first time we were all in a room together and we've only met online. So it's really exciting and I'm sure you can feel the energy from us as well. So you will have been sent some music and we're doing three different pieces across the courses this afternoon. Um, so make sure that you have them ready. If you're not sure where they are or you need some help finding them, you can email events at bbe.org.uk and we'll be able to help you out. That email address is also in the description of the video. Um, so if you need any help finding it, then that's where you'll need to go. So this workshop session is going to finish at 3 p.m. Um, so we've got two full hours of lo lots of stuff to cram in there. But we are going to have a break halfway through and there's going to be a couple of points throughout the afternoon where we have a bit of a screen break as well. We're also going to have some special guests that are um, going to be joining us via video, but we're going to tell you a little bit more about them later on. I hope that some of you watched the lunchtime performances by the amazing musicians at the British Army. Um, they were absolutely fantastic. So that, I hope that got you into the mood for this afternoon. But enough from me. I am going to now welcome the Fun Foundations team um, to carry on for this afternoon. So Helen, over to you. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Helen, and I'm going to introduce you once again to our friends. We've got Sheila. Hello. We've got Paul, Hello. we've got Dee, and we've got the other Paul. Hello. We're having great fun here today. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about something that bands do that's really exciting. When you play in a brass band, sooner or later you'll be asked to take part in a march. Bands play in all kinds of marching events, especially in the late spring and early summer. Sometimes as part of village fates and carnivals and walking days, church parades. And the most famous of all is the Whit Friday marches up here in the north, around the villages of Saddleworth and Tameside. Marching is one of the most exciting things about playing in a band, but it has its challenges. You have to march in time with the beat and you have to keep in line with all the other players, sometimes in the wind and the rain or in the heat with the sun in your eyes. Your music will be on a little march card held up by a lyre and playing on the move is quite a skill to master. All of that requires really good co coordination and that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to march along to the Champions, a famous march by Major George Wilcox. I'm just going to give you an idea of some of the actions that we're going to do. We're going to start off with some straightforward marching, two beats in every bar. And we always march off with our left foot first, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. It's really important to keep strictly to the beat. Once we've got that going, we're going to pick up some imaginary symbols and we're going to crash them on the first beat of every bar. But you've got to make sure that you're still keeping your feet moving. That's where the coordination comes in. There's a quiet section in the middle where I'm going to ask you to pick up your instrument and hold it in the position that you would hold it in to play it. And we're going to carry on marching in this quiet section. We get to the next section, we're going to put our instruments down, we're passing the Queen, we're going to salute, salute to the front, salute to the side, and finally we're going to pick up a great big bass drum, hold it in front of us, get the stick, 
and we're going to carry on marching and beating that bass drum. Now, what happens at the end of the march? How do we know we're coming to the end? I wonder how we'll know. Who can tell me? Does the bass drum give us a special signal? It does. The oh. bass drum gives us something called a double tap. It goes bang, 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 bang. Bang, bang, bang. And that tells you that we're coming to the end of the piece. Okay. So, is everybody ready? So, all of you there, you need to get up off the sofa now. <laughs> Stand up nice and straight. Put your shoulders back. <laughs> Give us a big smile. Because we're going to start off by the left. Quick march. <laughs> Beat going. Well, now that we're all wound up, I'm going to hand you over to Sheila, who's going to calm us all down. She's going to lead our next activity. <laughs> Sheila. Sheila's going to have to calm down a little bit first, I think, um, having not marched for some time. Um, that's been a bit of a workout for me. Um, so thanks for waking us up, Helen. I'm really, really, really grateful. Uh, OK. We're going to blow some more of the cobwebs away now with some of the exercises from the breathing gym. If you haven't heard of this before, it's um, great to get your lungs working and optimising, ready to play. When we've done here today, Google breathing gym, and you'll find all sorts of videos and books by Patrick Sheridan and Sam Polifian. They are fab for waking everything up. So, first of all, we're gonna tense your body. You can make a lot of noise if you want to. I find it helps. Um, Tense your body up and then we're going to release it and shake it out. Are you ready? Yeah. Tense. Here we go. And release. Oh, that's great. We're going to do it again. It was so good. Here we go. And release. And shake it out. Here we go. That's nice. I like that. Okay. So, um, next thing we're going to do, we're going to let out all your air. Um, and as we breathe in, we're going to block the air with your hand. Keep breathing in, 
hold it, and then we're going to do a big sigh, one of those big sighs that we all like, to let it all out. Here we go. So we're going to breathe in. Oh, sorry, not, we're not. We're not. We're going to breathe out. Breathe out. And then we're going to breathe in. Keep breathing in. Block it. And let it all go. Oh, nice. Okay. So this time we're going to do um, what we call a double pop. So we're going to let all your air out. We're going to block the air with your hand. Keep breathing in. Then we're going to breathe in some more. Block the air again. Keep breathing in. And then a big sigh. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah, ready. Here we go. Let all the air out. In we come. And another one. Hold it. Oh, and let it all go. Here we go. Good stuff. Oh, and we're going to do another big sigh. Here we go. Nice. So, uh, we're going to go from um, an E sound now to an O sound. And this is all about uh, kind of panting with an E sound, and we're going to pant through to O. So we're going to end up with a very wide mouth down to a, um, a very narrow mouth. Here we go. So. And relax. Let all the air out. And roll your shoulders. Okay, and to finish, we're going to have a big sigh, um, and then we're going to get a paper aeroplane, because these are very, very useful. Um, so my paper aeroplane is, of course, transparent, um, and it's COVID-friendly, of course. So we're going to take a breath in, and then we're going to take a, a big, long breath out as far as we can, and be really, really careful about projecting that air into the distance. So, big sigh to start with. Okay. Breathe in. And out. And if you're not relaxed now, I don't think you ever will be. Okay. Now take in a deep breath and relax. And we're going to grab your mouthpiece. Oh, mine's on the floor, the furthest place away. Okay, so um, not all your teachers and band leaders um, will use their mouthpiece to get things going with your instrument. For today, we're going to use our mouthpieces to just start things off without having to worry about the sound we make. Some of you might not have played your instruments at all for a long time, and if this is you, good luck. We're all right behind you. So we're going to try and find... Um, a buzzing sound with our lips that we're comfortable with. It doesn't have to be the same sound as anybody else because nobody's listening. So um, a buzzing sound, and we're going to add our mouthpiece to that buzz. Here we go. Quite surreal. We're going to do it again. Here we go. A buzz. Lovely. Okay. So we're going to try and make um, a low buzz sound now to a high buzz sound, as if you were playing from a C to a G. I don't know what a C to a G sounds like, so I'm going to guess um, it's going to sound like this for now. <laughs> Copy me. <laughs> Okay, good. Now, try to imagine the sounds from C to F. If that was C to G, we're now going to go from C to F. Here we go. And now we're going to go from C to E. And C to D. And now we're going to do steps up, C, D, E, F, G, and we're going to hold that G for as long as we can. Here we go. 
And we're going to go um, G, F, E, D, C now, and we're going to hold the C for as long as we can. Here we go. Super. And we've got some big lungs here. I hope we've got some big lungs um, at home. So grab your instrument carefully. And... Um, we are just going to play a C. We're going to play a long C for as well as long as we can. No show-offs, though. No show-offs. <laughs> okay. Just a big long C to empty your lungs of the air. Here we go. <laughs> going anybody still going are you still going out there no right okay we're going to um do exactly the same thing now but we're going to play between c and g as if it's one long note with your air we're just going to keep the air flowing even when you're changing through the notes between c and g here we go everybody in together three four <laughs> chill now that's nice okay so i'm going to spoil it now here um, we're going to do some chromatic scales now just to get our brains working and our fingers working um we're going to play a chromatic scale of c you should see this on the screen and we're going to play this slurred when we hit the top note hold it um let's not go any faster than this this is a crotchet beat so we're going to be Da da di da dum about that speed. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> some people off screen who are really trying to show off here okay um, so let's go up to an E now we're going to carry on up the chromatic scale and we're going to hold our E here we go one two three four <laughs> can if you struggle stop at what you think is your highest note but do slur it all and hold your highest note whatever note that is we're going to go up to G off we go one two three four <laughs> one the very last one um, we're going to go all the way from top G down to bottom G and hold it for as long as you can one two three four <laughs> Okay, so we're going to move over to Helen again now. She's going to tell you about what we're playing next. Well, 
It's, it's you. Is it me? In actual fact. Is it me? Because we are going to do a lovely piece, another piece by our composer of the day, Alan Fernie. We've, um, hang on a minute, we haven't done. I'm getting muddled up here. Are we getting muddled? Getting muddled we up getting here. Muddled up, we always folks. get muddled up. We're going to play our first piece, which is a really exciting concert opener called Prismatic Light. Put your hands up if you have played Prismatic Light before. Once or twice. It's a really, really exciting piece by Alan Fernie. Some of you have seen it before, but some of you might have never seen it. So we're going to play it through, first of all, to see if you are familiar with it. If you want to play along with it, if you've, if you've seen it before and you're happy with it, you want to play along, then you may, you feel you're very welcome to. You might prefer to listen to it and look at the valves and the slide positions and just weigh it up. And when we've played through it, I'm going to talk through some of the key points that you, want to, that you might want some help with. So we'll look at some of the interesting features. But before we start, let's just check the key signature. You'll see that it's in a nice, easy key. If you're playing a B-flat instrument, then you're in the key of C major. If you're playing an E-flat instrument, you're in the key of G major. You've just got F-sharp to, to worry about. If you're on the bass trombone, you're in B-flat major. You've got B-flats and E-flats. It's got four beats in a bar, and you're going to hear four clicks before we start to give you the speed of the beat. So here we go. Prismatic light. Thank you. 
Wow, what a great piece of music that is. Isn't it exciting? The way it just lifts everyone that's playing it and everyone that's listening to it. So let's have a look at some of the key points in this piece. So the opening has a really exciting opening with the cornets playing fortissimo minims, answered by the euphoniums and the baritones and the basses, and a big, powerful fortissimo at bar three. Dear on bum boom. At bar seven, watch out for the accented syncopation in the back row cornets and the first trombone and the horns. You need to really bring that out. And then in bar eight, the bass trombone, the euphonium and the basses really need to tongue those quavers very firmly and make a crescendo. We're going to have a go at the beginning to letter A just to demonstrate those little points. Play along with us, please. Okay. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay. When we get to letter, letter A is very similar to the opening. When we get to letter B, the tune goes into the flugel and the euphonium part. Okay, so the flugel and euphonium, are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> at letter C. When we get to letter C, that's a much bolder version of the same section, with the main tune this time in the soprano cornet. That's a really magical moment when you hear the soprano playing that really high. The seventh bar of C, the dynamic comes down slightly and it builds into the ninth bar where there's a quaver and semi-quaver pattern that's passed between the cornets and the horns and the trombones and the baritones. Okay, so another place where very, very clear tonguing is needed is here, fortissimo and molto marcato. There's a dim that leads into letter D, which is calmer and much more melodic. Now, at letter D, there's a lovely little bit that exchanges between the euphoniums and baritones and the horns. It goes like this. This is the third bar of D for those people. So it's the horn, the, the first bar, the solo horn, first baritone, and the euphonium, third bar of D. One, two, three, four. It's a lovely little bit where it goes backwards and forwards. Make sure that you count that entry really, really carefully. Percussionists, at this point, you need to keep the repetitive pattern going very steady. Dun 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 All the way through creating excitement. Starts loud, comes down, builds up again. Letter E is, again is similar to D, it's growing and it's building until we get towards letter F to forte, the bar before F, where a new semiquaver figure is introduced in the euphonium and first baritone. Now it's moving very quickly between an A and a, a G and A and a C and you might find this more comfortable to do on your third valve than you're only moving one valve. <laughs> easier than using one and two all the way through. The four bars before H have got really accented quavers all the way through the band. Bum, 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 noticeably in the bass bar. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, and that creates excitement as we build up towards letter H. Now, when we get to H, the theme comes back again, but this time the melody is in the lower instruments, in the trombones and the euphonium. Shall we play that, that re-entry then at letter H? Just listen how the tunes pass back then to the lower instruments. H. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay. At letter I, the tune is in the back row cornets again, and at J, we've got a return of the melody that we had at B, but this time in the back row cornets. Letter K is tutti forza. I wonder what tutti forza means. What does tutti mean? At home, I've heard those people say, I don't know what it means. What does tutti mean? Everybody. You get an ice cream and it's tutti frutti, it's all the fruits, yeah? <laughs> Don't get that anymore, do you? Yeah. So everybody's playing. Forza, I wonder what forza could mean. 
Sounds pretty loud to me. Force, yeah. strength, a fort. So, everybody and really big and loud. Molto marcato, very marked. So this is us starting to go towards the end of the piece and to get it more and more exciting as it lifts towards the end. You've got to make sure that your tongue, the quavers and the semi-quavers, really, really firmly. There is a massive big rallentando in the last four bars, and you've got a diminuendo, and then a crescendo over the sixth and seventh bars of K. The euphoniums, the basses, and the percussion are in control here. Ooh. Everything's slowing down. It's going da 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 You really got to watch your conductor um, when you're playing this live. It's harder to do it without a conductor, but you need to watch very, very closely so that you all slow down at the same time. The Timps have got a marvelous part near the end. Bum 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 bum. It's just so exciting, and it lifts the band up and up and up until we come to a spectacular three Fs. What does three Fs mean? One F's forte, two F's is fortissimo, three F's fortississimo. Can you say that all together? Fortissimo. Okay, so that's that. how we get to that spectacular finish. So we're going to have another go now and we're going to see if we can add a bit more detail this time and improve our performance. Are you ready? Yeah. Fun Foundations team. Are you ready there at home? Why don't you open the windows and play to everyone outside? Keep them all happy. <laughs> piece it really is I hope you all enjoyed that 
We're now going to show you a short video. It's why you get your breath back before the next piece. And it's, um, it's Rebecca Lundberg. Rebecca Lundberg is the principal trombone player of the Fairies Band. And um, Rebecca Lundberg is a really, really fantastic trombonist. Now, um, this, uh, this fairy band are based just up the road from here. They're based in Stockport. And Becky's going to talk about slide technique. Although this is aimed at trombone players, there are some hints and tips on warming up and breathing and tonguing for players of all instruments. So let's see what Becky Lundberg has got to say. Hi, my name is Becky Lundberg and I'm the principal trombone player of the Fairy Band. <laughs> exercises that will help you to focus on your slide technique. Now slide technique is perhaps a slightly confusing term because it sounds like it just refers to how you move your slide when in reality there's a little bit more to it than that. It also involves your tongue and your air and how you coordinate that with your slide and how efficiently you're moving your slide. So there's actually quite a lot there for us to think about as trombone players. I'm going to show you a really simple exercise and there are a few ways in which you can play this in order to think about how you coordinate your slide with your tongue. The first time you play the exercise, try it with a glissando between the notes. There are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, it means you don't need to focus on using your tongue and you can just think about moving your slide freely and accurately. Secondly, it's also a great way of keeping yourself relaxed and this is important for your breathing, for your sound. It also helps you to make sure that your body and your arm don't get too tense. And good slide technique is really a balance between being accurate with your arm and not being too rigid. <laughs> take that down to sixth and seventh position as well. Now the next time you try it, this time I want you to add the tongue and really concentrate on moving the slide as late and as quickly as you can. And it's also important that you listen to the two notes to make sure that you're moving between them as cleanly as possible. <laughs> detached and it's actually much easier to be less precise with your slide when you're playing detached notes because there's more room for error between the notes so instead of playing minims I want you to play them as quavers but move your slide in the same way that you would if you were playing the minims <laughs> Thank you. 
And the other great thing about these exercises is that they work really well as a warm up. The long notes help you to think about your sound and your breathing and you can also focus on your tuning and they also work really well on any harmonic so you may find it easier starting on a middle G or a concert F for bass trombone players and the exercises will work the same. So there you have it, a few simple exercises to help you focus on your slide technique.
everybody. Um, back with Brass Foundations on our Fund Foundations Day. And uh, I'm going to take you through a really lovely piece of music. Songs are so important to the brass music that we play. And so much can be learned from how skilled singers perform songs, but also from how they're written. Eric Whittaker, who wrote The Seal Lullaby, is a real master of melody. And this arrangement really shows off his expertise. I first came across this piece as a band piece. I didn't even realise it was a song. Whittaker wrote it for an animated film that was to be based on the story of the White Seal by Rudyard Kipling. Of course, Rudyard Kipling's most famous um, story is The Jungle Book. The film never actually got made. Apparently, they made Kung Fu Panda instead. <laughs> the story opens with a lullaby from a mummy seal to her seal pup. And these are the words of that lullaby. Oh, hush thee, my baby, the night is behind us, and black are the waters that sparkled so green. The moon o'er the comas looks downwards to find us, at rest in the hollows that rustle between. Where billow meets billow, then soft be thy pillow, O oh, weary wee flippling, curl at thy ease. The storm shall not wake thee, nor shark overtake thee, asleep in the arms of the slow swinging seas. Isn't the word flippling amazing? <laughs> I think it could be a new favourite. Um, it gets my seal of approval. <laughs> For me, the most important words, however, are the words of the last line. Asleep in the arms of the slow swinging seas. Because all the way through, you can get a sense of the ebb and flow of the sea. Not crashing on the seashore, but if we play effectively, we will just feel the slow swinging seas in the two bar phrases he has written. They rise at the, at the end of the first bar of a pair and fall by the end of the second. And this repeats all the way through. You'll feel it as we play along with the Cory band. But before we do, can I just introduce you to my flippling? I'm Sheila Allen, and this is Alan. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are going to need your chosen part for the seal lullaby. Pick up your instruments. Um, and I've lost my place. <laughs> Pick up your instruments. There's going to be a two bar click to help you arrive at the start altogether. So six clicks to count. Shall we cue the music, Alan? Cue the music. <laughs>
Oh, that is absolutely great. So, such a beautiful piece of music. We can hear that the melody is actually quite angular in places. Eric Whittaker was worried that Dreamscape were taking a long time to get back to him about his song, and he thought that the melody may have been a bit complicated. But the great thing is, in this arrangement for band, lots of different parts get a snippet of the tune, and so it passes from one player or section to the next. We have to try to be really smooth while we do that and try to make sounds with our instrument that don't stand out too much so that the sounds blend. Keep your tone as mellow as you can. Think seal-shaped, round and plump. <laughs> we can achieve that if we open our throats while we play. It's the difference between this... <laughs> And this. I'm sure you play better than that. Um, and it's the difference, maybe, between this. Go compare. Go, Go compare. compare. Just imagine you're on the edge of a yawn. Let's try this. So... Goodness. Right. Have a look at your screens. This is a small part of the tune taken from the flugelhorn and the solar cornet parts. It doesn't matter if you don't play the flugel or the cornet. No one's listening. Take a look at the two bar phrases for the slow swinging seas. <laughs> linking into a phrase that has had the melody be sure to breathe in the beat before if your part allows another feature of the music that we can see in this extract is the use of a rhythm called the scotch snap this rhythm occurs over and over again and it's characterized by a short note followed by a long one typically a quaver followed by a dotted crotchet or a semiquaver followed by a dotted quaver here we have it twice. When this is played in the context of Scottish folk music, it can sometimes have quite a defined, harsh effect. But in the seal lullaby, we have to remember that it is a lullaby. And for me, that should be approached really gently. Think about that as we play through this section again. Play along with us. We're going to give you a four-bar intro, and you can join in with me when I start to play. to remember number one the feeling of the two bar phrases the ebb and flow of the sea but not to the point of feeling seasick subtlety is key number two produce a mellow tone open up the back of the throat as if you're going to sing the go compare advert number three be aware of passing the melody from one part to another smoothness of delivery is important and number four the scotch snap be gentle with it. Don't wake the baby. If we can do all that, we will get the Brass Foundation's seal of approval. <laughs> oh, yes. So we're going to play through the whole thing with Corey. 
Have any of us ever played with Corey? Anybody know if they're any good? Who? I've heard of them. Yeah, yeah kind of, <laughs> on, the, on the grapevine. So, Alan, should we cue the music? Cue the music. just bliss thank you everybody really well done if your band doesn't yet have this piece in its library it's about time it did get in touch with your conductor let them know about it um audiences love to uh, hear it and we love to play it don't we, we do yeah. we do love Beautiful. to play it so it's now time for you to have a screen and instrument break we are going to have a five minute break and we will see you in a few moments
Hi everyone, my name is Gary Curtin and I'm the principal euphonium player of the Fonus Brass Band. I've been asked to speak to you today about range on a brass instrument. Now, um, <laughs> this is a funny one because often when we talk about range, everyone assumes that it's that way we're talking about. But don't forget, there is uh, the lower register as well. And to be honest, if you play in the low register quite well, it's often going to help your upper register. So please don't forget the lower register as well. But for the upper register, there are really two things you need to know. The first one is airflow, and the second one is your lips. And those two are a partnership. They go hand in hand. One without the other doesn't really work. For example, if we talk about the airflow, if you have really good airflow, but your lips don't tighten very well, then you're just going to really get a very loud middle register note, right? And if the other way, if you have uh, a poor airflow in the upper register, but your lips are really good at tightening, then all that's going to happen is your lips are going to um, bite off the air and you have this that kind of a sound okay so it has to be hand in hand so what you're aiming for is pushing the air faster and uh, the higher you go push the air faster the higher you go I have a phrase for this the higher you go the further you blow I use this when I teach and what I mean by that is when you push into the higher register you need to imagine in your head that you're blowing your air further across the room so for example let's say uh, a middle G. Let's say the C above that. E and G. Keep going. And eventually you're going to feel that when you're getting into this top C or above register, the thrusters are really going to be on and the air is going to be pushing through really, really fast. Okay. And again, of course, we talk about tightening the lips. There's a way to... Um, Imagine that if you like. Get, imagine you have a garden hose, right? And I want you to point it towards the back of the garden or the garden fence or whatever, okay? Turn the tap on just a little bit. Now the water is just going to be dribbling out a little bit, isn't it? Turn the tap off. This is like your air. Turn the tap off and you'll see that the water flow is going to start pushing further towards the back of the garden, okay? Now if you have the, the top of the hose open, I want you to imagine you put your thumb over the top. What tends to happen there is you, you cause pressure behind this closing aperture. That's exactly what happens here. But if you don't have enough water power or air power in a, a position, then what happens is you chop off the water flow. OK, so the water flow must be there already to make sure that you can tighten up the aperture to give you a high register note. OK, so I'll just demonstrate on my lips. <laughs> So you can see, or you can probably hear, hopefully, that I'm speeding the air up and I'm tightening my lips. So the lips, you've got to keep them flush, OK? I'm not sure if you know that word, but basically you don't want the top lip to come over the bottom lip or anything else, OK? Ideally, you want to keep them flush. Your airflow will eventually point down, but your lip shouldn't fall over the top of the bottom lip, OK? Um, and the other thing I guess you need is strength in your in your lips, because otherwise it's going to be difficult to push them together. Right. Um, there's a few ways to do this. Um, one, I guess, is long tones. Um, there's a few ways to do that one, by the way. If you're doing long tones in the upper register, let's say um, let's say your upper register is a G currently around a G. I'm going to walk up to that G and then I'm going to hold it. <laughs> Then I'm going to push a semitone higher. Etc, etc. That's one way to do it. And the other way, I guess, is lip flexibilities. Simple things like this. for that is it's keeping your lip in a relatively uh, similar position pretty much the same for that small movement between a C and E your lip isn't going to move very much at all so remember two things have to happen for your upper register to work airflow a good airflow and your lips don't forget to keep all of this open all of the time no tightening and pinching a relaxed posture and the air power 
comes from here, your intercostal muscles. Very, very important to know that, okay? Imagine you're blowing out, uh, put your hand like this and put it on your tummy and imagine you're blowing out a birthday cake across the room. You should feel that the muscles tighten up and tense. That's where the power comes from for our airflow, okay? So eventually, hopefully, etc etc i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope this will help you with your range practice it is not something that happens overnight so give it time but also give it lots of um patience so keep at it as uh, little and often is always the best way little and often and um it'll come trust me it'll come enjoy thank you welcome back everyone the final piece that we're going to work on this afternoon is an arrangement of Alan Fernie's baggy trousers. This piece was originally recorded in 1980 by the Scar group Madness and was written by their lead singer Suggs. We're very fortunate here at Brass Bands England to have Paul Fisher working for us. He's one of our youth development brass specialists and here he is to tell you a little bit more about Madness and this particular song. Well, thank you very much, Helen. And hello, guys out there. Lovely to speak to you. So, yes, I am a very lucky boy. Being a musician, we get to wear lots of different hats. So here I am today with my friends uh, from Brass Band England, the Brass Foundations team. That's one of my hats. I work for Hertfordshire Music Service. That's another one of my hats. I'm involved with Amersham Brass Band. That's my third hat. And one of my other hats is to be a freelance trombone player. And part of my role with that is to be one of the trombone players with this band, Madness, who are absolutely wonderful. They're brilliant people to work from, for. You'll know their music. Even if you don't think you know all their music, you will know their music. It's on so many films, TV shows, and adverts. And they are a terrific group that were very famous in the 80s. Now, this song that we're gonna play for you today, Baggy Trousers, and of course, you're gonna play for us as well, uh, uh, Helen mentioned the word, it's a piece of scar. Now what is scar? That's a word that brass bands don't often use. But actually, it's a very heavy uh, piece of music and brass is very, very prominent in scar music. It originates from Jamaica in the 50s and 60s and it's got a very heavy offbeat. Now traditionally, in a brass band, if we're playing a march like we did earlier, the offbeat, you jump, dup, 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 it'd be quite sort of casual, tight, and got to be in the right place, but not too heavy. But in ska music, the backbeat is everything. It's got to be really, really aggressive and tight. So, so we're going to tongue those notes really, really hard, okay? And uh, it's that's the most important thing about ska. So, uh, Madness, lots of their tunes have got this really, really heavy backbeat. Look out for it. There's a few of their tunes. There's a great one called Nightboat to Cairo, which is also fantastic. Okay, so... I want to also just mention about Madness, because I think this is important today. When we started off this morning, we didn't play many tunes with actual music on our stands. We did quite a lot of improvising. And I th the Madness, they all met at school. They were school kids at their school, just mates that met, and they decided they were going to become a band. And that's how it happened. They were 14, 15, 16, and they just came together as a little community of seven lads that wanted to be in a band together. Some of them read music, some of them don't read music, but they are fantastic songwriters. And I think that's so important that you guys at home know that you don't necessarily have to read every single dot of music to be able to write fantastic songs. Okay, so what I suggest we do, I would love you to join in. We're gonna, you've got your music for uh, Baggy Trousers. We're gonna play it through, and then we're gonna talk about it a little bit and then we're gonna play it through one more time. The things to look out for before we start, there's something that I'm not sure I've ever seen on a piece of brass band music before. It says at the top of my music, Hyper Scar. So that's pretty cool. Basically, everything that I've just said. Sempre molto ritmico. Now, if I asked the lads at Madness what that meant, I don't think they'd have a clue. But we know what that means, don't we? We're really, really gonna hit this very, very rhythmically. Okay, so at the top of the chart, you're going to get six clicks, uh, I think that's right, and then there's going to be a little percussion, dig -a -dig -a -da, and then we're in, dun, dun, dun. Be really, really aggressive with your articulation. Okay, Kang, here we go. I'll shout out the letters for you as we're going along, too. Hit it. Two, three, four, one, two. <laughs> 
could find your way through the music as we were going along okay so I was listening hard okay now I can't hear you guys at home I can hear all the people who are in this room with me and they're playing beautifully really beautifully okay when I play with madness it doesn't necessarily sound beautiful okay and those offbeats are really 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 hard just when you think you couldn't play them any any uh sort of louder you need to go even louder still so can we go uh, from letter a just you guys i just wanted to show and i'm going to really hit you have you got off beats too dear yeah. right so let's the people in the room can we just go from letter a for a few bars and i want you to hit these quavers off beats as loud as you loud but short and aggressive really a really really sharp tight tongue okay Definitely i'm going to give you four short. okay here we go i'll give you two bars from a one two uh, one, two, three, four. Fantastic. Okay, so hopefully you can hear the real aggression. And it's so often in a brass band, we don't, our conductors, like me, we don't necessarily want to hear the fizz that we make because we've got to make it sound like an ensemble. But the excitement of ska music is actually that fizz that we get in the sound. So if you get that at this point, then that's absolutely fab. Don't worry about it. Okay, so there are three main sections that I want us to really look at as we work through this piece, okay? We're going to play it again in a few moments' time. Uh, as we've already just done, a letter A, okay? So letter A has got those short, sharp notes. Now articulation in any ensemble that we play in is really, really important, okay? And if we look at Alan Fernie's music in front of us, he's given us lots of detail and all the detail he's given us is absolutely correct. So if you've got accents, okay, then give us an accent. If you've got staccato, the staccato notes, particularly at letter A, remember how short and sharp we've just played them, okay? At uh, letter B, you can see some phrases over some of the points, okay, that's fine. Uh, and then when we get to letter D, that's a different, a different kind of melody. So there's three kind of melodies within this tune. So look after that a little bit more at D, which brings us on to letter E, okay? Now E, is this da -di -da -di -di -da 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 -di da 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 It's a little bit spooky. So what's going to happen next, okay? And then you'll notice there's this fantastic crescendo. And when we do this live, we start with our bells down here. 
okay? And then we bring them all the way up through the crescendo to when we get to the forte at the end, we hit those two crotchets, okay? So maybe if any of you guys have got that long crescendo on your parts at home, we could bring our bells down, okay? And bend our knees and then come up and hit those two notes, okay? So that is at E and at H, that comes twice round, okay? Now, a couple of things that I've noticed. At letter F, the fourth bar of letter F, have a little look on your part. There's a fludg. What on earth does that mean? Okay, can you see that on your part at home? Okay, well that means flutter tonguing. What we like at flutter tonguing, gang? Oh, it's all okay. All right, uh, who's got the flutter? Have you got flutter tonguing bit? No, fucking. Have you got a D? Uh, yes. Okay, so we have a go, me and you. Ready? So this is D and I. Have you anyone else got flutter tonguing? All right, come on, here we go. So I'm going to count you in to the fourth bar of F. How we do? We go. If you can do that, everyone give it a go. One, two, three. Okay, here we go. We're going to play that part. After four at home. One, two, three. Okay, let's do it one more time. Ready? As nasty and as harsh as you can make it. Here we go. One, two, three. Something like that. Okay, so look out for that. Okay, there's one other moment where we all have to go, oi, which is the one, two, three, fourth bar of the fourth beat of the fourth bar of oi, of, <laughs> of G, there is an oi, okay? Now, I don't want any oi's. I want oi. So you ready? After three, I want everyone to give us a big oi. Here we go. One, two, three, oi. And again, louder. One, two, three, oi. Let's hear it, okay? Really, really give me that, okay? So, there's one other point that I want to bring to your attention, okay? Which is the one bar before C, which is a 6-4 bar. So we've been going along quite happily in 4-4, four, four, okay? And then all of a sudden, they throw in a 6-4 bar. Now, I'll tell you a little secret. They won't have a clue that they threw in a 6-4 bar. That's just how it went in their head. But that's why they're such great songwriters, because they write what they feel. They don't write to a script. They just go with what's in their head. So look out for that 6-4 bar. That's really, really important. It comes back again in the penultimate bar, the second to last peak bar of the piece. That 6-4 bar comes in in that repeated section at letter I. So look out for that. But that's my top tips for baggy trousers. Most importantly, everything that Madness does is says they do exactly what it says on the tin. It's madness and it's great. And the most important thing about our day is we've had lots of fun and that's what I want you to get through in this piece. So remember my choreography, which is just before letter F and just before letter I. I'm gonna be keeping my eye on these lot to make sure they do it. I will definitely be doing it. Okay, <coughs> so let's have some tunes. Here we go. We're gonna go from the top. Listen out for the clicks at the top. Two, three, four, one, two. <laughs>
fantastic. Love it. I hope you enjoyed Baggy Trousers. If you've not heard Madness before, then get on your YouTube, get on your Spotify and give them a listen. I'm going to hand back to my brilliant friend in the orange over there, Helen. Hi there. Well, what a day we have had. I think on behalf of the Fun Foundations team here, I can say what a brilliant time it's been to actually get together. We have been meeting most days on Zoom since January, and this is the first time we've come into a room together to play. Now, some of you might not have played together for a while, but it won't be long now. We'll all soon be back at band. And it's been so nice to listen to everybody's thoughts on breathing, on tonguing, about style of different pieces, about how to approach learning a new piece. We've had our top tips. And we've, we've really have had fun, haven't we? Great. Haven't yeah. we? Yeah. Have you all enjoyed yeah. it? Yeah. No, come on, after three, have you all enjoyed it? One, two, three. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a little bit of a mini concert. We're going to play through our three pieces. So we're starting off with our concert opener, Prismatic Light. We're moving then on to Calm Waters for the Seal Lullaby. And then we're going to finish off in Hyper Scar with Madness <laughs> and Baggy Trousers. So if you can put your three pieces up in order and as i said before if you've not yet opened the window for your neighbors to have a listen along you know they might be quite happy to be out there dancing along in the street to the music all very entertaining stuff so starting off then with prismatic light moving on to seal lullaby and then to baggy trousers here we go fun foundations in concert Thank you. Thank you. 
breath back. <clears throat> we'll, uh, oh, the audience are clapping there. Our sound crew have been working very, very hard, like today and yesterday, getting ready for our performance. Well, moving on now to the cool waters of the Seal Lullaby. Where is he? The seal. Oh, swim off. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, when you're ready. feeling very calm and relaxed now. Isn't it wonderful the way music can make you feel? The first one has us all excited, that one has us all lovely and calm. And now... For something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> so remember the things we talked about in our rehearsal. Hard articulation. Do not be afraid of those backbeats. They can be as hard as you can possibly make them. Like you're putting holes in your uh, living room walls, okay? <laughs> Hopefully your mums and dads are going to go mad in the kitchen. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, so that's good. Remember your choreography. So you're going to come down and you're going to move up and get louder. Look out for the six four bars. Look out for the oi. And look out for that bar of flutter tongue. And they are the little points in baggy trousers. This is the last thing we're going to do today. So let's make it fantastic. Here we go. Two, three, four, one, two. <laughs> 
again to the amazing Fun Foundations team who have worked their socks off over the last couple of days getting together and it's been so amazing just to have us all in the same room. I know we keep saying it but that is we do feel that it's completely amazing and what we really wanted from this afternoon was to give you the feeling of playing together in a group again because we know how powerful that is and we know how much you guys want that. <laughs> um, so that's what we wanted to feel from this. And it's been amazing. We all felt a bit emotional yesterday when we started playing Seal Lullaby. Um, <laughs> it just, it felt like a real moment. And I think it's, it's a really exciting time because we, we're getting there. <laughs> you know, it's been a really tough year, but we are getting there. And I think the next few months are gonna be really interesting as we slowly get back to, to normal. Maybe, <laughs> but maybe we're going to do more things like this and have more things that are online and more things that are a bit more accessible and more things that we can take part in. And I think we'll probably get there. We love doing this yeah. kind of thing. Oh, yeah. 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 So I think we'll probably do a few, a few more things like this, I think. Um, Paul Fisher, what has been your favourite part today? Just having fun, really, meeting these guys, but we've already said that. <laughs> but having fun, and for me personally, I know I, I was doing a lot this morning with the youngsters, that thing about playing away from the music and getting the real basics right and, and listening as musicians, I think it's so important that we listen mm. and, and trying to get away from this thing in front of us sometimes, this music stand, and step away as brass band musicians and be brave enough to accept the new challenge. That's, and I, we did that this morning and you guys were awesome at that, so that was cool. Yeah, absolutely. Dee, what about you? Ooh, having some new music to play. Yeah. So being introduced to prismatic, prismatic light. Am I yeah. saying it right? Yeah. Um, that's been really good to play something new with, with a new group of people. Yeah, absolutely. Paul, what about you? Yeah, learning from these guys has been great fun. So I hope you've learned at home, because I've learned loads today. And playing the seal lullaby, we sat outside and played the seal lullaby. Yes, it was. It was just... <laughs> it was emotional. Oh. <laughs> what about you, Sheila? Um, Helen in goggles and a swimming hat this <laughs> Absolutely. That's usual was, for me. was quite something. Um, but of course, uh, being together with everybody has been, uh, well, too long coming, to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. And Helen, what about you? Finish what I was exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. The most magical thing, the most wonderful thing about this last couple of days has been being here with these guys 
and yeah. being playing together with friends and that's what music does that's what it's all about playing an instrument it's not just about playing music it's about the friendships and the getting together and the socializing that's what we've all missed but we're going to get there aren't we we're going to get back yeah. there hey. Hey. Oh, quite <laughs> <laughs> i know we're not going to finish off this live stream by crying because we can't do that we can't do that okay so what I suggest, because what I was thinking for this last little bit is that we might do something to calm us down and relax us. But actually, I've gone in completely the other way. <laughs> and I just, I feel like we need to finish off on a high. So I thought that we could do baggy trousers again, but we're going to do as much dancing on the spot as possible. Okay, to keep it high energy and to finish off on a high. And maybe if you're feeling like you need a little bit of a calm later on, you can look back and do some of Sheila's breathing exercises from early on in the day if you feel like you need to bring down. But I think we should end on high energy. Yeah? Are we yeah, agreed definitely. with that? Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Yeah. Amazing. Let's, let's go for that then. <laughs> and I still think our flutter tonguing can be more fluttery and our oi can have more annoy and our bat beats can be even louder and shorter and harsher. Yeah, yeah. So let's do it. Two, three, four, one, two. <laughs> everyone I was dancing you might not have been able to see me but I was dancing I promise um, thank you so much to our wonderful tech team let's give them a round of applause thank you Brass Pass for being very patient with us as we throw lots of demands at them at the last minute um, thank you to these guys and give them a round of applause because they've done amazing work today Thank you to the other BB staff who are dotted around and have been doing great work helping us out and answering emails. We much appreciate it. Um, and thank you, Sarah. Hey. <laughs> um, I'm sure that lots of you who have watched along today are going to want to do this again. I'm sure you will. Um, so this video is still going to be available and you can play along. If this is a music that you've got at home, um, you might not have access to it after today because um, um, for the afternoon session, we've just given you access to the music for the purpose of just doing this. But if it's something that you do have in your band room, you might want to play along and do it again. If you've got siblings who you think maybe maybe they're, they're not quite up to the standard that you are yet, you know, they'll get there. Um, we did a brilliant morning session earlier that is also going to be on there. That's those are fun basics. And you don't need any music at all for those. So I definitely recommend go, going to look at that. If you think there's anyone 
you might enjoy it. Because I think there's lots more people who are going to enjoy this. I think so. Um, thank you so much, everyone. You're going to hear a lot more from the Brass Foundations team. Um, and we'd love to see you either in person, hopefully, or at another workshop day very, very soon. Have a great rest of your day.